This is Recoil, G.I. Joe's long-range recon patrol specialist. Recoil was first available in 1989. He was also sold in 1990. He was discontinued in 1991. Let's take a look at Recoil's accessories, starting with his weapon. And this weapon appears to be an M16 with an M203 grenade launcher attached to it. It has a bayonet and what looks to be a red dot sight attached to it. This same rifle is recolored dark gray and given to later releases of Steel Brigade. Recoil's rifle is an updated and more detailed version of the rifle that came with the 1986 Leatherneck. Recoil's second accessory is what the card contents call a pistol. It looks like it's got like two pistols attached, like one on the top, one on the bottom. Recoil's next accessory is his mine case, and this mine case is an amazingly realistic accessory. This mine case contains what appear to be M18 Claymore mines, which are directional mines. Uh, the mines are blank on the back side, but on this side they say front. On actual Claymore mines, they would say front toward enemy. There's a variation of this accessory. Some of them had a thin handle like this, and others had a thick handle like that. This backpack is a communications backpack similar to the U.S. Army's ANPRC-77 portable transceiver with a gooseneck antenna. It has a couple of what look like maybe smoke grenades here, a highly detailed pouch with a U.S. stamped on it. It has a ca canteen here, a couple of extra magazines for his rifle over here, and this wonderfully sculpted coiled cord that goes to a handset for his communications pack. Let's take a look at the articulation on Recoil. Recoil had the articulation that was standard by 1989. That means he could turn his head from left to right, but he could also look up and down. His neck was on a ball joint. He could swing his arm up at the shoulder. He could also swivel it at the shoulder all the way around. He had a hinge at the elbow so he could move at the elbow about 90 degrees, and he could swivel at the bicep all the way around. The figure was held together with a rubber o-ring that looped around the inside that allowed him to move at the torso a little bit he could move his legs apart about so far he could move his legs at the hip about 90 degrees and he could bend at the knee about 90 degrees let's take a look at the sculpt design and color of recoil starting with his head and on his head he has this green non-removable helmet he has green sunglasses and blonde hair on his chest he has an open collar with his shirt or jumpsuit unzipped kind of a high collar that goes all the way around uh, he has some impressively detailed green straps here and these segments appear to be extra magazines for his rifle. He has some grenades. The straps continue around to the back where he has this extra detail on his lower back. It looks like he has some kind of line or cord there and two canteens. On his uniform he has these dark green kind of block patterns and this looks like an attempt to do digital camouflage. On his arms he has long sleeves, more of that camouflage pattern and brown gloves. On his waist he has a fairly detailed green web belt. Uh, some straps that go down to his holster and some pockets in the back. On his legs we see more of that camouflage pattern and a green pistol holster. His boots are a little bit unusual. Instead of wearing modern army combat boots, he is wearing brown Wellington boots. Let's take a look at Recoil's file card and as you can see I have three file cards here. These are variant file cards and these file cards have textual differences. This file card has Recoil's serial number as 0078866DD66. It also has his grade of E5 over here under his birthplace. This file card has a different serial number. It has his serial number as 00734277 and it also has his grade of E5 over here under his birthplace. This third file card has yet a third serial number. The serial number on this one is 00734610077 and it has his grade of E5 over here or to the side next to his birthplace. Also unlike the other cards it has this registered trademark symbol above the G.I. Joe logo. His codename is Recoil and his specialty is LRRP, in parentheses Long Range Recon Patrol and in another parentheses it says it's pronounced LERP. His final name is Joseph Felton, no middle initial. Primary military specialty is Infantry, secondary military specialty RTO, Radio Telephone Operator. His birthplace is Fashion Island Washington and his grade is E5. This top section says Recoil was a marathon runner and professional bodybuilder before he joined G.I. Joe. His excellent physical shape put him in good stead to be a LERP. A LERP sneaks into the bush carrying 100 pounds of gear, including rations, radio, weapons, ammo, and climbing rope. He is expected to penetrate deep within enemy territory, gather intelligence, and extricate himself without being detected. A LERP who has to use weapons is not a true LERP. This bottom section has a quote. It says, Recoil would be a lot more popular if he wasn't practicing all the time. Oh, he puts in regular time at the survival ranges, 
but that's not what I mean. He practices sneaking up on people. You think you're all alone, lost in your thoughts, then all of a sudden he's standing right next to you. When people ask him what his job in the army is, he tells them being quiet. Recoil made very few appearances in G.I. Joe media. He did appear in three issues of the comic book, issues number 111 through 113. Recoil did not appear in any G.I. Joe animated series.